This isn't a dragged out 10 minutes and 15 second long video with a three minutes Dollar Shave Club advertisement in the middle. This is my practical guide for guys who want real advice from someone who's been through this journey. I started weightlifting about five years ago with the same goals as you. I'm gonna try and give you the best real advice I can in hopes of helping other guys who were at my starting point because honestly, it's unreal how much my life has changed due to this grind. I'm going to do some assuming here. You're a young male, age 13 to mid 20s. You chose this video specifically because it's a guide on building an attractive body. So I'm gonna assume that you want to attract the opposite sex and you believe building a muscular body helps with this. I'll just tell you the truth right now. It absolutely does. Building an attractive physique means to resistance train that is weightlifting. This makes muscles while focusing on a progressive overload. So that literally just means making progress as you go along, using heavier weights, doing more reps, longer workouts. The usual guides you'll see online will have you lifting heavy three times a week, focusing on compound movements. This advice is given by guys on Reddit who look like this. Take this advice if you do not want to look attractive. Here is what I call the hierarchy of attractive muscle groups. Just quickly, I said this was gonna be a no bullshit guide, so I'm gonna follow that. I'm not gonna go in depth with the particular exercises you should be using to grow these particular muscles. There's literally millions of videos out there that will already tell you this. My advice is to find a credible source of information, such as a scientific research-based YouTuber, and look up their guides on the particular muscle you're looking into. So starting from number one, abs, the abdominal muscles. This is what symbolizes the Greek gods. The importance of abs in terms of attractiveness is huge. Every single person you meet will know what developed abs look like. Every single person watching this video has probably tried getting a six pack when they were younger as well. A quick tip here, do a lot more focus on the lower abs. The upper four pack is generally built quite well through a normal weightlifting program, but the lower set underdeveloped and that's the one that really fine tunes the physique to make it look more attractive. Number two, the neck. I bet you aren't training your neck and you've probably never even heard of neck training before. This makes an insane difference in your physique, just trust me. Thicker, muscular neck makes you look a lot more masculine and less like a little boy. The neck is a body part that is pretty much always visible no matter what type of clothing you wear, so it's important to develop this. Don't be like those bodybuilders who will train for years and never do anything directly for the neck because getting a developed body which has grown in size and your neck is still the same size makes you look really strange. So I'll place a picture here where you can see a bodybuilder who hasn't trained his neck. The guy's jacked, but if we just can see his neck and his face, he'll look like a skinny boy. Then I'll uncrop his body and you can see how big he is. But if you were just able to see his face, you wouldn't have realized that he put in probably 10 years into the gym. Just because he didn't train neck, you couldn't even see that dedication. It's crazy. Number three, the delts. So shoulders, specifically the lateral delts. Lateral just means side. So this literally just means the side of your shoulder. You train this by doing lateral raises with light weight and you'll see a difference in your physique within seconds when you've got a pump. It really is that simple. This muscle is insane. It makes you look wider and your waist slimmer in comparison. Other parts of your shoulder muscle, like the traps, the front delts and the rear delts are really important as well, but I believe the lateral delts should be a much bigger priority. Number four, arms, including forearms. Just like the neck, this is a body part that is generally always visible. So any progress you make here will be very obvious to others. It makes it quite a valuable to train. Forearms in particular add that fine tune effect I talked about with the lower abs. If your forearms are undeveloped, it really does make your physique look strange and uneven. Back and legs. I've put these at the lowest hierarchy. 
don't get me wrong, don't skip these days and don't not train them. I still train back and legs twice a week and I hit them hard. I make progress on them. However, I feel like these muscles generally round off your physique so it doesn't really look weird if they're undeveloped. But they're certainly other muscles that should be a much higher priority if you're focusing on aesthetics, building an attractive body. No girl has ever said that she's attracted to you because you've got massive quads or calves. Diet. You can get into this to optimize your performance in the gym, but generally a lot of people get off put due to the diet changes most guides will tell you. It will absolutely benefit you to track your macronutrients and weigh out every single gram of food that you eat, but honestly, the majority of people will never do this. It is quite a lot of effort. So here's my quick advice that I think will be valuable in this journey. You want to be building as much muscle as possible without putting on too much fat. So always try to be lean bulking. That pretty much just means to eat slightly more than you do now the equivalent of two slices of toast on top of what you generally eat will cause you to gain around half a pound a week. The majority of that weight will be muscle if you're training hard and you're quite new to the gym as well. You can still eat quite healthy with high protein and enjoy snacks and meals out whenever you want. I've made a video talking about my awful diet where through my five year transformation, I ate junk food pretty much every day, but I still made pretty good progress. You can't out train a bad diet. Balls. You can't out train a bad diet, I can. So this is how I've been eating junk food every single night. It really can be done, so don't think that to build an attractive body you need to just eat chicken and rice and broccoli and you can't ever have a burger. Put it this way, I go to McDonald's most days and I'm pretty muscular. This food isn't going to make you fat. Eating too much of any food, including healthy food like vegetables, will cause you to gain fat. Even if you don't want to get into the diet too much, you can't be bothered with tracking and weighing your food. I'd still recommend just getting some knowledge on this topic. If you can just go and learn a few things about this, I really do think it'll stick with you for life. Just go and learn what calories are, how they work, what a calorie maintenance level means, what a calorie deficit and calorie surplus means, macronutrients. Learn that all foods consist of protein, fats and carbs. This type of knowledge just opens up your mind. You, you learn that there's no such thing as bad food and that you can eat pretty much whatever you want as long as you keep the sort of macronutrient levels generally fine. All right, you've heard the advice. You have the knowledge. What if you just can't be bothered? I'm a pretty lazy guy myself and that's why I always try to revolve my videos around real average people because this advice is just useless if you can't be asked going to the gym. I made a separate video on how to go about this journey if you're quite a lazy person like me. Exercise is like oatmeal. If you don't like it, it's just because you haven't customized it to your liking. It's actually got pretty decent feedback as well. So I'll put a direct link to that video at the top of this description so you can have a watch of that. My idea for this is for you guys to save this video in your YouTube, watch later, saved videos, liked videos, whatever. So you can just come back to it multiple times in the future to refresh your memory. So in terms of that, I'm just going to fire off a bunch of quick random tips that I can think of that would be valuable if you're watching this in the future. So just quick, sleep is very important. Get more than eight hours. Everyone will tell you to get six to eight. No, get eight to 10. If you're working out, you need longer. There's no such thing as over training, it's under recovering. So if you can only sleep a certain amount of hours at nighttime and you have to wake up at six or seven for work or for school, that's fine. You'll only get six, seven hours. But when you come back, there's nothing stopping you from just having a half an hour, 20 minute nap and doing that twice. And studies say that that's actually pretty healthy for you as well. And in terms of supplements, creatine, protein powder, vitamin D, zinc. There's some other ones that you can take. A lot of them are just waste money. Any kind of supplement you're getting should be very cheap, a couple of pounds each. Vitamin D, zinc, multivitamins, whatever that bullshit you're gonna buy. Literally search for it on uh, eBay. Don't buy any of those that get delivered to your door and it's customized for men or whatever bullshit. Get the multivitamins that are like 99p on eBay. It's the exact same thing. Vitamin D is like two pound on eBay for like a pack of like a thousand. Zinc is like four pounds for like a pack of a hundred, something like that. Creatine is like 10 pounds and it'll last you six months. Protein powder is a bit more expensive. You'll buy it for about 30, 50 pounds, and it'll, but it'll last for like six months anyway. Optimize the perfect scenario. 
So the video that I've linked at the top of the description, I went into this with better detail, but there's always a perfect particular scenario that you'll have a great exercise session in. So the scenario can be changed by the variables. What that literally just means is that there's factors that go into the exercise session, like the music you listen to, the clothes you wear, what time you train, what gym you train, if you train by yourself, any random factor that you think that could potentially affect your session, just write it down, have a little thought about it, but spend some time on this. What is the perfect scenario for you? Do you want to go to the gym and train at nighttime? Would you train better in the morning, but then would you have to wake up earlier for that? So you'd have to go to sleep earlier, figure all this out, and then you'll be able to find the perfect scenario, the schedule that works best for you. Cardio doesn't really help with building an attractive body but it does have good health benefits plus it stops you being unattractive if you can't go up some stairs without wheezing like a smoker i'm going to end this video with a bit of a motivational speech i've kept calling all this a journey that's exactly what it is this is your journey you're writing the chapters of this book make sure when you look back you'll feel proud of the effort you're putting in we all wish we could be teleported back in time and slap some sense into our younger selves and tell them to work harder Make sure your future self isn't looking back at you today and thinking this. Make sure your future self thanks you for the work you're putting in today. And as always, buy my premium Snapchat.